Now let's look at one more way to improve this contract. Sometimes people will try to interact with the contract that takes Ethereum or the native blockchain token without actually going through the required function calls that, that are needed. For example, on a JavaScript EVM here, I could actually try to send this contract money without calling the fund function. However, if I were to do that, what would happen? Would our fund function get triggered? No, it wouldn't get triggered. We wouldn't keep track of that funder. We wouldn't have that person's information updated in this contract. So if later on we want to give rewards or something, we wouldn't know about those funders. And this wouldn't be great because people would send our contract money without us ever knowing. And we wouldn't be able to give them any credit or anything. Additionally, maybe they called the wrong function by accident and they, they weren't using MetaMask and they weren't using a tool to tell them, hey, this transaction is likely going to fail. So what can we do in this case? What happens if someone sends this contract ETH without calling the fund function? Right now, if we were to send this fund me contract ETH, it would just go to the contract, right? And this contract just wouldn't keep track of those people. But there's actually a way for when people send money to this contract or people call a function that doesn't exist for us to still trigger some code. And now there are two special functions in Solidity. One is called receive and one is called the fallback. Now in Solidity, there are actually a number of special functions and two of these special functions are the receive special function and the fallback special function. A contract can have at most one receive function declared using the receive external payable without the function keyword. This function cannot have arguments, cannot return anything, and must have external visibility and a payable state mutability. What does that actually mean and or look like? Well, let's create a separate contract to go ahead and play with this. So in here, we're going to create a new file called fallbackexample.sol. And in here, we're going to add our basic pieces. SPX license identifier, MIT, pragma solidity, 0.8.7. And we'll do contract fallback example, like so. Feel free to pause the video to catch up to this point. Once we create our fallback contract, let's create a variable to go ahead and try to test this function. We'll create a UN256 public result variable. And let's create this receive function. So we'll say receive is going to be an external payable function. We don't add the function keyword for receive since Solidity knows that receive is a special function. Whenever we send Ethereum or make a transaction to this contract now, as long as there's no data associated with the transaction, this receive function will get triggered. What we can do in here now is we can say result equals one. So let's go ahead and test this out on the JavaScript virtual machine. So we compile this. So we're going to go ahead and compile this. We'll go deploy it on the JavaScript virtual machine. We're going to deploy our fallback example. And we're going to see what result is initialized to. Since we haven't set anything for result, result, of course, is initialized to zero. But what if we were to send this contract some Ethereum? Well, receive would go ahead and be triggered here. We can actually send this contract some Ethereum directly by working with this low level interactions bit here. Don't worry about what call data means for now. Just know that this area down here is a way we can send and work with different functions. And we can add parameters to this transaction by going up here and adjusting the variables up here. If we keep call data blank, it'll be the same as if we were in MetaMask and just hitting send and then choosing this contract address. Again, we can't actually use MetaMask since this is a virtual machine and not one of the networks that we're working with. So if I do, for example, I change this value to one way and I keep everything blank and I go ahead and hit this transaction button, which again, is gonna be the same as hitting this send button, but only sending one way, what do you think will happen? Well, let's try it. We can see in the log area that we did indeed send a transaction. And if you look, at the description here, you can even see it says from so and so to fallback example dot receive. It looks like it called our receive function, which should have updated our result to one. So if we hit result now, we can indeed see that result has been updated to the value of one. Well, let's go ahead and delete this. Let's deploy this contract again. And this time, let's have value be zero. Does receive get triggered this time? So let's pull this down. 
Let's hit transact. Let's leave the call data blank. We'll leave value at zero. So this will be the same as if we had sent zero Ethereum to this contract. Let's hit transact. It looks like that went through. Do you think result is going to be one or zero? If you thought one, you were correct. Our receive function gets triggered anytime we send a transaction to this contract now, and we don't specify a function and we keep the call data blank. When working with any other contract, like FundMe, for example, when we call one of these functions, we're actually just populating this call data bit with certain data that points to one of these functions up here. If we send a transaction and we add data to it, we could actually call one of these functions. Now let's try this again. Let's delete the contract again. We'll redeploy, open this up. Result is currently zero. Receive, like I said, only is triggered if our call data to it is blank. Now this time, if I add some call data to this transaction, do you think receive will be triggered this time? If we hit transact and remix, we actually get a pop-up saying fallback function is not defined. This is because whenever data is sent with a transaction, Solidity says, oh, well, since you're sending data, you're not looking for receive, you're looking for some function. So let me look for that function for you. Hmm, I don't see any function that matches the 0x00. So I'm going to look for your fallback function. Remix is smart enough to know that we don't have a fallback function. The second special function in Solidity is called the fallback function. This is very similar to the receive function, except for the fact that it can work even when data is sent along with transaction. So our fallback will look something like this. Fallback, external, payable, result equals two. Fallback is another one of these functions where we're not going to put the function selector because Solidity is expecting this. Actually, you're already familiar with one other special function. If we go back to our FundMe, our constructor, for example, is another type of special function. There's no function keyword. Solidity knows that this constructor is immediately called when we deploy this contract. So now we have our fallback function. Let's go ahead and compile this. Let's delete our old contract. Let's go ahead and deploy this new contract. Let's click here. If we hit result. We do indeed see it's set to zero. Now, if I add this zero X zero zero and I send this, and I hit transact, this is equivalent to calling our contract here without a valid function. So our contract goes, hmm, I don't recognize what you're trying to tell me here. I'm going to refer you to our fallback. And now if we hit result, we see that it's been updated to two. If we take this away, Solidity will go, hmm, it looks like you're trying to send some Ethereum or call this contract without specifying what you want to do. Well, I have a receive function, so I'm just going to go ahead and forward you to that. So if we call transact, we hit result, we see it updates back to one. Add some data, hit transact, we see it updates to two. No data, updates to one. Soliditybyexample.org has a wonderful little chart that we can use to figure out whether or not receive is gonna get triggered or fallback is gonna get triggered. If it is empty and there's a receive function, it'll call the receive function. If it is data and there's no receive function, it'll just go to the fallback function. And if there's no fallback function, it might just, it might error out. So this is a lot of really fantastic information here. How can we apply this to our FundMe contract here? Well, what we can do now in our FundMe is we can add these fallback and receive functions just in case somebody actually sends us contract money instead of calling the fund function correctly. So what we can do is let's add a receive function. So if somebody accidentally sends it money, we can still process the transaction. We'll say receive is gonna be external payable, and we'll just have the receive function call fund. And we'll do the same thing with our fallback function. We'll have fallback external payable. We'll just have it automatically call fund. Now, if somebody accidentally sends this money without calling our fund function, it'll still automatically route them over to the fund function. This means too, that if somebody doesn't send us enough funding, it'll that transaction will still get reverted. So let's go ahead now and let's switch to RinkB to test this on a real test net. I'm on RinkB in my MetaMask. Let's switch over to Injected Web3. And we'll scroll down, we'll choose our FundMe contract, and we'll go ahead and deploy this. MetaMask pops up. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the transaction. 
and we see our fund me contract here. Right now, we can see the own we can see I'm the owner, we can see minimum USD, and we can see of course that it's a blank contract and there's nothing funded in here. If we copy the address and then go to Rinkby Etherscan, paste the address in, we can see that there's no ether in here and the only transaction associated with this has been the contract creation. We saw what happened before when we hit the fund function. Our contract was updated with a new balance and that funder was added to our array. Let's see what happens now if we just directly send this contract money without calling the fund function here. If we did this right, our receive function should pick it up and kick the transaction over to fund. So let's copy this address. We'll go to our MetaMask. We'll hit send, paste the address in here. We'll do 0.02 ETH again, because this should be more than the minimum amount in USD. We'll hit next. I'll go ahead and confirm this. And after a slight delay, if we did this right, we should see this transaction having called the fund function here. Now that our transaction has gone through, and after a brief delay and waiting for Etherscan to update, we do indeed see that our balance has updated to 0.02, which of course, this makes sense. And we see in the transactions list here, we see that this actually went through as a, tra as a transfer instead of us calling the fund function. Let's go ahead and remix and see if our funders was updated. It looks like it was. At the zeroth position of funders, we have our address. And if we take our address and pop it into address to amount funded, we can see exactly how much we had funded. This means that since we added this receive function in here, we automatically had it call our fund function up here. So awesome work. We were able to add a receive function to help people who accidentally call the wrong function or accidentally send this contract money instead of correctly calling the fund function. Now, if they had directly called the fund function, it would have cost them a little bit less gas, but at least this time they're going to get credit and add it to our funders array for having sent our funding contract money.